for real, this place is like. I read out that in, in the reviews it said on that, be honest, a lot of bugs, but I tend not to believe that because people exaggerate, but this yeah. is. I'm so itchy, and I'm now covered from head to toe in mosquito spray because there's a bunch lingering in here. This place is, it's Crazy. a little, it's a little too much. Okay, shit is getting real right now. There are bees everywhere. Bill just came back from wakeboarding and brought a swarm of noceums. So he's picking up the anchor. We're getting out of here. Ah, the bees of Cortez. <laughs> Mass exodus from that anchorage. Morning routine on anchor. Friday, trying to get a video out, and uh, yeah, we don't have. There's no cell service at all in the Sea of Cortez, so we're reliant on either Dell's dome or a boat that has Starlink, which is uh, our friend the One Life have a Starlink. So yeah, I'm just out here trying to pirate the internet. Bill's <laughs> on the laptop. Got the phone over here, trying to post a little. Oh, went up. We definitely could not do YouTube um, in the Sea of Cortez without our friends' <laughs> internet. <laughs> so, thankful for that. Uh, I should also mention that we have to be on Delos's starboard side to get the connection without going over there. So right now, that's working, which is why we're rushing because um, it's quite windy and the weather changes on a dime. So we flip directions pretty constantly. <laughs> so when we flip the other way and we're on their port side, we can't get the internet anymore. So, yeah. After finishing our work, we set sail headed for the small and uninhabited isla San Francisco, 20 miles north of our current location, in the Sea of Cortez, off of Mexico's western coast, close to the Baja California Peninsula's shores. We'll be sailing for about four hours if the breeze continues to hold, and our buddy boats Delos and Sailing Vessel One Life are also making the trip with us. <laughs> What are you saying? I think I wonder if Brian's putting a kite up. I'll be pretty jealous if he's doing that. Well, you'll just have to put up yours then. I'm slightly damaged. I'm afraid the tape's gonna go <laughs> if I in this much wind. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to line this up here. So this is the panel needs to be paired. So we probably should. Sort of like all back together. Two patches. I had to go to the other side though. Um, and this came out a little bit. It's fixed though, there's vinegar. It's fixed, but I don't know if I trust it's flung like 17, 18 true, which is sort of already on the edge for a kite. I think I'd rather try it uh, in lighter air first to see how how well the tape holds up. I don't want to raise it and go. And then.
even though the Sea of Cortez is not known for having much wind during early fall, we've been fortunate today to catch a break in the regular light wind pattern, which is why we planned a longer sail. Longer being more than just a couple of hours. We're moving along nicely in the stiff southerly breeze, headed north, and we'll crush these 20 miles quickly. I think Gary's trying to come on my side and steal my wind, but I keep just heading up a little bit more in front, so. How fast are you going? Uh, we just hit 7.4 on the surf. We're doing about solid seven, though. The 20 knots true. Nice. Bottom's a little dirty. I don't know, I think Dallas might have just pulled ahead. I saw them blanket the crap out of one life. See that jib going? Do you believe we sailed like 19 miles and I was well ahead? <laughs> they have a kite up at the perfect angle and the wind just kind of shifted on me. And I don't have light air sail and there's no way I have time to change it either. I'm gonna see. I might work my way to windward of him and steal his air so he has to pass me on. He has to go through my wind shadow to uh, get ahead of us. Plus, it's faster because I'm heading up a little bit, so. I'm taking fishing gear only a couple miles away. No fish today. Bill's like having a conniption over here. I think Brian's taking the kite down. He headed more downwind. Yes, he has a control line in his hand. That was close. I should have been filming us this whole time. He's just like They got within out. 0.14 miles of us. 0.13. That's pretty close. That's like 500 feet. Over 20 miles. That was, that was well, tight. We are trying to anchor and Zello's just dragged. Um, we're all trying to kind of fit into a spot here away from the other boats. So we're gonna wait and let them re-anchor so that we can situate ourselves. Uh, honestly, also we wanna get close to the dome. <laughs> I think the risk is if those coramels come in from the west, like you're on a lee shore. Oh. So I think we want a little bit of like space to drag. Yeah. But it gets a little more south, you get more protection. Well, this is not the anchorage we went to sleep in. <laughs> oh. Jeez, um, we're probably in, well, I don't know, a couple feet waves, but uh, it was actually quite bad overnight. Um, 
like much more intense than this, so we didn't sleep that much. Um, and I can see Delos is even moving a lot. So I have a feeling no one slept last night, but um, the wind just changes so, uh, so randomly here. Um, this is not forecasted. But thing is, um, it also seems to just turn off out of nowhere too. So I'm hoping it just it just stops. We'll just have a nap later. Whoa. Bill's been sleeping out here because it's so hot. Um, it's in our. So as you can see, I have quite the knife collection I've accumulated over the years. That is why I was particularly excited to receive today this knife set from Komikoto. The knife set comes in a heavy duty ash wood box, which is great for safely storing the knives as well as making a great gift. Let's open them up and check out how they feel. The balance on these knives is incredible. Um, it just feels really good to hold it in your hand. Komikoto knives are made with real Japanese steel and it falls on a tradition that is over 800 years old and using steel to make knives in Japan. Also, each knife is individually inspected. I'm curious to see how they're going to chop. They feel really sharp, they feel really well balanced in my hand. I had read that these are used by Michelin star chefs around the world. I'm going to go chop some garlic with it now and see how that works. Wow, that is pretty sharp. It feels effortless. It sounds like a sword. You hear that Japanese steel? Jeez. All right, guys, it's time for the big test here. A couple hours later, you can see you have this beautiful pork tenderloin. Let's see how she cuts. And they look so well weighted. Oh man, it's like butter. <laughs> yeah. I am super impressed with the cutting ability of this knife. That was so easy. It's also kind of cool because these knives have a lifetime guarantee. You know how hard we are on gear on Calico Skies? Right now, Kamikoto is having a holiday sale, and we are happy to offer our viewers $50 off on any purchase they make using the discount code Calico Skies. Check the description and box above for more info. In our cabin. Did you get any sleep? <laughs> Not much. Oh, anchor life. Not checking the anchor arms. And... Do we move at all? Nope. Yeah, where is with this place? It's like that Coromel wind comes in at night. No. We should like start sleeping during the day or something. <laughs> yeah, go sailing at night. So the great thing about a windy day is actually being able to use our oven. This is the coldest day we've had on board. It's 86 now, but it was 83 for a long time. Uh, the only issue is uh, with our alcohol. Yeah, it's yellow flame again. I'm I don't it. know what happened if it just like went out. I'm gonna eat a little half rum, hungry. It's like... It's good this way. It's, it's just not crispy, but it's like mostly done. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm close, can I see a piece? It's like just a little bit doughy. Hey, look at that crazy storm over there. Oh, look at that like thunderhead over there. The big boy squall. So busy looking at the water, I didn't even notice that. The water's amazing color from up here.
Brian snuck attacked us. He left. It did blow in like 12 knots. Now it's just doing nothing. Wah wah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, bit of a disappointing start there, huh? Yeah. Here it comes. Oh, there's a gust. Hey. <laughs> Quite hot. Okay. Come on, wind make an appearance now. The wind that blew so strongly overnight and into this morning, called Coromel winds, occur when cool marine air from the Pacific side of the Baja California Peninsula is drawn over the desert to the warmer Sea of Cortez, typically beginning at sunset. This afternoon, the wind has returned to its typical southwesterly light wind weather pattern. So, unlike our sail the other day, we'll need our lighter air code zero sail. I gotta clear those rocks and then I could do a jibe over to starboard. So I'm gonna clear the rocks, I'm gonna do a 90 degree turn and jibe over. Um, should be interesting jibing code zero, I don't usually do that on my own, I usually roll it up, but I'm gonna go for it, it's pretty light air. And I have my boom brake on, and hopefully I'll catch Delos. Brian snuck off, he, he lifted anchor without starting the engine, as did we, but he didn't tell us. I just looked out the window and I saw Delos and I radioed him, he said sneak attack. So, I'm gonna try to catch him. A little lighter air, so this is where Calico Skies is good. Dallas is going. Four. At this pace, I'll be on Brian at uh, 20 minutes. Let's see, I don't know. Things are very uh, shifty coming from behind this mountain here, so we're under trimmed right now, but I'm keeping that way so we don't yell over as much and it's trying to float on our feet. We're a little overpowered in some of the puffs coming down this mountain top, but <laughs> now she's falling nicely. Uh. Seven, almost seven knots now. 
Caught the sailor. I want to see that hook drop under sail, Bill. Will do. I'm coming down. I see shallow water. <laughs> I'm not coming at 50 feet. Grace is sleeping. I'm by myself. Grace is sleeping? Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, Bill, watch out for the shallow water in front of you. Someone got attacked by no seams last night. Actually <laughs> attacked. If bug bites freak you out, don't watch the next few minutes because I have to show somebody. Look at my Can't see it really. legs. My, I'm just completely, I think I have a thousand bites. So we got to this new anchorage yesterday. I was sleeping during the sale. Got here, it's beautiful. We went on a little dinghy ride around, which we didn't film, but went to bed and I got literally attacked and I couldn't do anything because I was trying to put the net up on our um, hatch. And uh, I had to like vacuum out our sheet, my sheets at 4 a.m. because uh, this happened like, I went to bed kind of late and then like, I fell asleep for an hour and then I woke up and this happened. So I don't know what happened. They just kind of, I think they came in because the net's not but fine yeah, enough. They're actually smaller than the nets. I was watching them move through the and nets. And there's like, the my head. sheets are bloody and I literally think I have like a thousand bites. Um, for real, this place is like, I read that in the reviews it said on Navionics a lot of bugs, but I tend not to believe that because people exaggerate, but this yeah. is not. I'm so itchy and I'm now covered from head to toe in mosquito spray because there's a bunch lingering in here. This place is, it's a little, it's a little too much. Plus there's bees, like we can't even go outside. There's, <laughs> we're pinned in by, ah, the bees of Cortez. And they're just like hovering around out here. So that's my little rant. I just radioed Delos to find out if I was not alone and I was not alone. Kaza is losing her mind too. So we're looking at, um, <laughs> we're looking at the, the book and we're gonna find a different place. On the flip side, the boys decided to be a smart idea to go to the beach last night, and we were literally in a cloud of the bugs. We were doing a little uh, like night time lapse mission. Sometimes fun to go to the beach when there's no moon and just f photograph the stars moving, and we were just inundated of bugs. Like I swallowed so many bugs. We started a fire to try to keep them away. That worked for like 45 minutes, and then they found us. Yeah, I breathed so. in a bunch of bugs last night too. Like up, they like went right up my nose. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> Okay, shit is getting real right now. There are bees everywhere. Bill just came back from wakeboarding and brought a swarm of noceums. So he's picking up the anchor. We're getting out of here. mass exodus from that anchorage. The bees got too much. Um, we're heading to another little town across the way. I think I'm gonna get the spinnaker up now. Oh man. This place is very pretty, but one night's all I got in me. 